Hello. <coughs> Welcome to the class the Gene Interaction. We have seen that for development of a single character there may be one gene responsible or there may be many more genes responsible and when there are more than one gene responsible for the development of a single character each gene interfere or interact with each other and the phenomenon is called gene interaction and in most of the character of living organism you will see uh, that the characters are controlled by or governed by uh, several different genes but earlier Mendel has proposed that single gene is responsible for the single character for which the Mendel's law are not accepted and nowadays for example the law of independent assessment where the F2 phenotypic ratio was as uh, 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 in a dihybrid cross but however it doesn't hold good in all the cases now coming to this gene interaction this interaction occurs when two or more genes influence the outcome of a single character and these interaction can be between the genes of the same loci or between alleles or between non allelic genes so when this is between the interaction is between alleles it is called allelic gene interaction and when the genes are of different allele uh, then then it is called non allelic gene interaction now coming to this importance of this interaction we need to study this to find out which allele is dominant other over other whether it is allelic or non allelic and how a single trait is expressed with the interaction of many genes ultimately it will give some idea regarding this effect of non-genetic factors and this genetic factors and even both for the expression of a trait a character is dominant at the molecular label when it is seen in homozygous and in heterozygous genotypes and it is called recessive when it can be seen or its effect can be seen only when it is in homozygous genotype the dominance of one allele over another allele is determined by the activity of protein products or enzymes of allele by the manner in which protein produce products of allele work to produce the phenotype the allele that encode the phenotype most common are called wild type and is designated as plus and any form other than this wild type is called mutant allele now there are two a uh, situation one is haplosufficiency another one is haploinsufficiency this haplosufficiency is a situation in which an individual who is homozygous or heterozygous is dominant and sufficient to produce wild type phenotype but in haploinsufficiency the situation in which an individual who is heterozygous or hemizygous is incapable of providing sufficient protein products 
as to as your normal function now coming to the different types of gene interaction one is allylic or non epistatic gene interaction and this type of interaction give classical ratio of 3 is to 1 or 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 in dihybrid cross but a non allylic gene interaction or epistatic gene interaction we never find this 3 is to 1 or 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 ratio here the genes are located on same or different chromosomes and interact with each other for their expression and this non allylic gene interaction has been made after mendel and uh, there are several kinds of uh, gene interaction coming to one of the interaction that is incomplete dominance in incomplete dominance or in other word we can call it as partial dominance where the dominance of an allele over other is not complete as a result a third kind of phenotype appear which are differ from parent homozygous phenotype but are closer to one homozygous phenotype than the other here in the example mirabilis jalapa that is four o'clock plant if we cross one homozygous red with homozygous white flower plant in f1 we never get red but we get a pink flower phenotype and on selfing what we get we get one red two pink and one white flower plant that means the genotypic as well as phenotypic ratio remain 1 is to 2 is to 1 similarly this another kind this is another kind of interaction where you will find uh, there is expression of the both the allele uh, in heterozygotic condition and this can well be explained in blood groups so in blood group a the genotype are uh a0 or aa so in both the case the blood group is a similarly in b when both the alleles having either b or one with capital b another one without any antigen the resultant blood group is b but when both allele that is a and b are present then it is ab and when none of them are absent it is o group so codominance is most clearly identified when the protein products of both allele are detectable in heterozygous organism so in case of blood group a the antigen a is present and none of the other antigens are present but in case of b it is only b present but in case of ab when both the antigen a and b are present the blood group is ab and when none of the antigens are present we get o blood group similarly there is another kind of interaction when the presence of allele in homozygous condition is detrimental for the offspring and this kind of interaction are called lethal gene interaction it is said that 
no yellow mouse bread true that means when two yellow mouse are crossed we get two yellow mouse and one albino mouse because this homozygous yellow never survives and this homozygous condition is detrimental for the offspring as a result it dies now there are certain traits which are called sex influent traits that means these traits are produced by interaction of genes as well as the there is influence of the sex for example this baldness the baldness is mostly or very common in case of male it is because the male hormones are principal factor influencing substantial male hair loss whereas in female the hair thins on top of the head but is not completely lost as males so when uh, both these genes are in dominant both the alleles are in dominant form whether it is male or female both have full hair but in but in heterozygotic condition the female will have full hair but the male will be bald but when both the alleles are in recessive condition then there is thin hair in case of female and bald in case of male thus the b allele is dominant the capital b is dominant over small b allele in female while the opposite is true in case of male similarly there are some other examples where a particular genotype failed to produce the corresponding phenotype in which organism is non parental for the trait for example polydactyly expressivity is a term used in genetics to refer variation in phenotype among individuals carrying a particular genotype variable expressivity occurs when a phenotype is expressed to a different character among individual with the same genotype for example this wardenburg syndrome in wardenburg syndrome may have any all or four principal feature of the syndrome hearing loss different colored eyes a white for look of hair a premature graying of hair so these are some examples where in environment shows some effect on the genotype and phenotype and coming to this environmental interaction like in case of pku that is phenyl ketonuria this is an autosomal recessive disorder so when it is an autosomal recessive disorder uh, the disease occurs when the organism has both the allele in recessive condition so in the dietary protein there is a uh, phenyl alanine which is converted to tyrosine and that again goes for 
dopamine then different proteins and for the production of melanin however lacking the phenyl hydroxylase blocks the transformation of phenyl alanine to tyrosine and unmetabolized phenyl alanine is shunted into the pathway that leads to the formation of phenyl ketones and excess of phenyl alanine also inhibit the development and here you can find that when there is unaffected carrier father and there is an unaffected uh, carrier mother then in the offspring you can find always it is 1 is to 2 is to 1 if there are 4 um, offsprings one will be perfectly normal and one will be affected and two will be normal but will be the carriers now coming to this pleurotropy that means one gene control many phenotypic carrier and the example is sickle cell disease sickle cell disease is an autosomal recessive condition caused by mutation of the beta globin gene that in turn affects the structure and function of hemoglobin the hemoglobin is responsible for carrying oxygen molecule and due to this mutation in beta globin gene either trait A is produced or there is trait B or there is trait C so there are three traits so in one condition when both the alleles have this both have this dominant allele or normal allele that gives a normal phenotype with a normal hemoglobin but when it is in heterozygotic condition it is a sickle cell carrier the RBC or this red blood cell uh, looks like a sickle but when it is in recessive homozygous condition the organism is sickle cell anemic and therefore uh, the ratio will be 1 is to 2 is to 1 one having both the normal allele dominant allele they will be normal that will be normal and both the carrier will be there will be two with both the carrier but however the one having both the allele will be uh, homozygous recessive type the offspring will die so this phenomenon is called pleiotropy here you can find when there is a mutation in place of in place of glutamic acid valine is produced and as a result there is abnormal hemoglobin and always there is deoxygenation of hemoglobin in tissue this is this sickle cell RBC now coming to this epistatic and hypostatic gene when a gene or loci which suppress or marks the phenotypic expression of another gene at another loci or locus such gene is known as epistatic gene uh, epistatic is derived from a Greek term that is meaning standing up similarly the gene which expression is suppressed by the epistatic gene is called hypostatic gene now there are different kinds of epistatic interaction it can be a supplementary gene interaction can be a complementary gene action or there can be inhibitory gene action or duplicate gene action or masking gene action and polymeric gene uh, action however for this supplementary gene action some people use it as recessive epistasis 
for inhibitory some people use as dominant epistasis now coming to this supplementary gene interaction the dominant allele of one of two genes governing a character produces the phenotypic effect however dominant allele of other gene doesn't produce a phenotypic effect on its own but when it is present with dominant allele of the first gene it modifies the phenotype phenotypic effect produced by that gene for example the development of agouti coat color in mice so if a black color mouse is crossed with one albino then it produces in f1 and the coat color is agouti or gray now once on selfing of this f1 we get f2 where you will find this agouti to black to albino will be 9 is to 3 is to 4 here when black is crossed with albino this agouti is produced and and in f2 when this agouti is crossed with another agouti we find that nine of these are agouti type three are black and four are albino now similarly there is another interaction that is called complementary gene action in this kind of gene interaction both the allele in dominant condition able to produce one phenotype but in absence of any of the dominant allele doesn't produce the particular phenotype and in f2 the ratio become 9 is to 7 rather than 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 in case of this latherus odoratus that is sweet pea the flower color uh white or purple but when two white but when a purple plant is crossed with white one then in f2 we get a purple one and whenever this f2 is produced we get nine purple and seven white flower phenotypes so this is white variety and this is also white variety and you get a purple variety and on selfing in f2 we get nine purple and seven white flower plants so what happens there is a precursor one and they by the action of this C precursor two is produced, and by the action of this P, anthocyanin is produced. As a result, we get a purple colored plant, flower. Now, when both these alleles are in dominant condition, only anthocyanin is produced. Now, when this C is in dominant condition. however p is in recessive condition there is no production of anthocyanin similarly when c is in recessive condition precursor 2 is not produced even if p is in dominant condition till then no pigmentation now in last case when neither of these alleles are in dominant condition neither precursor 2 is produced nor the pigment as a result except the first case in all the case we get white flower so always the ratio is 9 is to 7 uh, similarly 
there is a case in case of deaf and mute deaf are the person who, who cannot uh, hear similarly mute are the person those cannot speak so always the deaf and mute is seen in the same individual once the individual is deaf it will be mute otherwise it will be normal so when a deep mute or uh, when there is a marriage between a deep mute and another deep mute having a heterozygotic condition for both the uh, genes then what happens uh, sorry homozygous condition for both the genes one in dominant homozygous condition another in dominant uh, the, uh, hom recessive homozygous condition then what happens in f2 f1 the organism will be the offspring will be normal and when two such individuals get married they have nine normal and seven deep mute individuals now coming to inhibitory ratio or you can call this dominant epistasis that means when dominant allele of one gene is present whether it is in homozygous condition or in heterozygous condition it produces the same phenotype in f2 so the ratio becomes 13 is to 3 instead of 9 is to 3 is to uh, 3 is to 1 while in homozygous recessive condition it produces a different phenotype so in case of this color in uh, in chicken that is white leg horn and white play mouth rock always you will find this white leg horn as both the genes in dominant homozygous condition whereas in white plymouth rock both the alleles are in uh, both the genes are in homozygous recessive condition and whenever there is a cross we get white one having heterozygotic condition for both the genes and when there is a selfing we get nine white and we get three colored and we get three white and uh, we get uh, one white so there will be nine white nine plus three plus one that is 13 will be of white and three will be colored so whether A is present in homozygous dominant condition or heterozygous uh, dominant condition always you will find uh, this is uh, white but uh, when it is sorry when b is in homozygotic or heterozygotic uh, dominant condition it will be white and even in the absence of both the uh, dominant allele it will be white but however when a is present in dominant condition whether homozygot or heterozygotic but the other one is in recessive condition then always it will be colored one always it will be colored one so in this case it is colored then it is also colored and this is colored so a is in here homozygous dominant condition here in heterozygotic condition and so also here so always the ratio is 13 is to 3 now there is another kind of uh, gene inter interaction 
uh, what I was calling that dominant epistasis here the ratio is 12 is to 3 is to 1 and there is another kind of gene interaction that is called duplicate gene interaction here when dominant allele of both the gene loci produce the same phenotype and in this case the ratio becomes 15 is to 1 rather than 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 and this is seen in case of safer sports plant you will find the two kind of uh, capsule one is triangular another one is ovoid so when a cross is made you get triangular in f1 and then selfing this triangular one you will get like 15 triangular shape and one is ovoid that means whether a or b that is present in homozygous or heterozygous dominant condition it will always produce the triangular uh, shape caps seed capsule but when both are in recessive homozygous condition the ovoid phenotype is seen so always the ratio is 15 is to 1 now in this case this is the flower color in in fenced in where the flower color is purple or white but whenever precursor 1 is present with the help of p allele it can produce anthocyanin uh, anthocyanin similarly uh, precursor 1 can be producing anthocyanin in, in presence of r whether p is in dominant or recessive condi condition doesn't matter and when both are in uh, dominant condition also you can see this anthocyanin pigment so in all the case you will find in all the case you will find that the color of the flower is purple but only one, one case it is white now similarly there is 9 is to 6 is to 1 so in this case the shape is either sphere shape or disc shape or long shape ok so in squash you will find three kind of shape one is disc another one is sphere another one is long shape so when a sphere shape is crossed with another sphere shape we get a disc shape and whenever a disc shape is crossed with another disc shape what we get we get a 9 is to 6 is to 1 interaction this is called polymeric gene it is because whenever both are present in dominant condition then only the disc shape appear but in absence of the dominant allele of other one what happens the one allele will show its presence in dominant condition so it will be a uh, spherical one but when both will be in dominant recessive homozygous uh, when both are in recessive homozygous condition it will be long one so this is the one so always you will find 9 is to 6 is to 1 now an allele of one gene marks the expression of allele of another gene so the gene that is called epistatic gene which marks the other gene and which is marked is called a hypostatic gene now the example what we have seen that is long spherical and disc shape so in case of this precursor a and b both are 
uh, required for the production of disk cell but in case of spherical either a or b that can produce the sphere shape so precursor can produce protein a or precursor can produce protein b and whether it is protein a or protein b both result in the formation of sphere shape but when none of these proteins that is protein a or protein b is produced then it becomes a long one so squash fruit shape has the phenotype in f2 is 9 is to 6 is to 1 now coming to this uh, recessive epistasis uh, it is like that in recessive condition the phenotype is different that means here the ratio is 9 is to uh, 3 is to 4 that is just like in uh, supplementary ratio so here when both will be in dominant condition then this black color is produced but when one is in dominant condition another in uh, recessive condition you will find this a chocolate color but when this is in dominant condition the b is in dominant condition however there is no uh, e in dominant condition then it is golden color and in absence of both this dominant allele it will be golden color so always you will find 9 is to 3 is to 4 and similarly we have seen in case of this dominant epistasis in fox glow flower color and also in 13 is to 3 that is chicken feather color so coming to the summary of epistasis you will find a uh, different phenotypic ratio in when there is no gene interaction always we find 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 ratio but however when there is gene interaction we can get 9 is to 7 in complementary ratio 15 is to 1 in duplicate ratio 9 is to 6 is to 1 in dominant and in recessive epistasis we get 9 is to 3 is to 4 in dominant epistasis we get 12 is to 3 is to 1 and in dominant suppression we get 13 is to 3 and as a result of this non allelic gene interaction sometimes unexpected phenotypes are produced whenever there is influence of the environment we have seen in case of the hair loss in case of this that is baldness or phenyl area with the help of the environment we get different uh, phenotypes